We are Robin and Steve. We just attempted to sail from Fiji to New Zealand, but ended up here in New Caledonia to dodge some weather. And in this building with a beautiful view, we completed our checkout of New Caledonia. But last episode, I did say I would explain why the land looks like this. It's a sad tale, so we'll gamify it. We'll call it fact or fish. If it all gets too much, just look at the fish. In the 1700s, more than 60,000 Kanaks were living in New Caledonia. But from later that century, things would change. The British brought disease, but that was just the beginning. Destruction came in many forms, from whaling, to deforestation for sandalwood harvest, to blackbirding, taking people against their will, for forced labour, and that was just the beginning. In 1853, the French flag was planted in New Caledonia, which paved the way for land theft on a new scale. Jails were big business, and New Caledonia was being used as a penitentiary. Yet more land was stolen for cattle farming and nickel mining. Protestant and Catholic missionaries came. Clashes between these faiths led to 15 Protestant chiefs being imprisoned and tortured. In 1946, the Canucks were given French citizenship and later still were allowed to vote. I could go on, but instead we're off to get local fruits of colonialism, croissants. And we also plan to gorge ourselves on tropical fruit and vegetables as we sail from New Caledonia to New Zealand. And we bid farewell to our friends from Amelie. Our passage was going to mostly be upwind, but with Cyclone Lola on the way, it was time to go. We tacked our way out of the pass on the 18th of October, expecting to be at sea about 10 days, hopefully less. We were glad to have been at sea recently, as we were still pretty well adjusted to the bumpy life of upwind sailing. see the ship Golden Hawk and it was heading our way at a respectable distance. As expected things did get pretty bumpy outside the pass. Sailing upwind can be quite disheartening. When you look at your speed and see that you're going negative 5.26 knots, but it was a big zigzag so as not to hit the reefs. So there was nothing to do but accept it and enjoy the birds. There's Golden Hawk, just close enough for a good view. After a while, the days start to blur into each other. By day two, we'd eaten all of the chocolate croissants. So after that time was just a blur and New Zealand still looked very far away because it was 800 nautical miles away. At least now we were going fast and we still had bread, cheese and vegetables. As we bounced along, we barely had to touch the sails and occasionally had to twiddle Wendy, our wind vane. We adjust the paddle angle with these strings which keeps us carrying on at an angle to the wind that we choose. We got in the way of a fish. We've become accustomed to life on an angle. One of the inconveniences of sailing upwind in a monohull. I get my lunge workout, just trying to make a cup of coffee. I can give my legs a good warm up just by filling the kettle with our fresh water foot pump. And then the lunge workout begins, just to stop myself from falling over. Steve strung up a bit of shock cord along behind the sink to prevent things such as cups or bottles of milk from flying as we prepare our beverages. 
even climbing in and out from the cockpit to the galley is a bit like rock climbing on a moving cliff. At least our gimbaled stove keeps the boiling water on the level. But all that challenge makes us really appreciate our hot beverages. Looking at the weather forecast can be emotionally testing. We expected to be going upwind for days and knew that we couldn't dilly-dally. Ex-tropical cyclone Lola was combining with another low and reforming, well, hopefully after our arrival. It's a great luxury to be able to have the technology these days to be able to check weather and communicate with family. Are any of you old enough to remember dial-up? There's plenty of time to nap, to eat, between pressing send and emails actually sending. As our friend put it, it may be expensive, but it is slow. I won't make you watch the whole download, but we do appreciate the technology. We bounced along and eventually our little dot looked a little bit closer to New Zealand and yet still pretty far. Unless something went wrong, we would beat ex-tropical cyclone Lola. This was our second and last tragedy of the journey. At least it shows there are still some fish out there. Here's its reverent send-off. We were pacing ourselves beautifully with our vegetable rations. We were going upwind in some fairly fierce winds, so here Steve is reefing the main. It can feel like not a lot goes on for days at a time, between sunrises, sunsets and birds. But we were slowly moving along and being sent a little east of where we'd like to go. But because of the weather forecast, we expected this. There's another boat out there. So great was the novelty of seeing another boat that we struck up a conversation. It can be tough tacking such huge distances. So it was nice to see another boat out there at the same angle as us. And no doubt bouncing around just like us. Breasts, I like to keep myself busy, in this case making curried egg. It's weird to throw eggshell overboard, knowing that the seas are kilometres deep. Another day had slipped by, soon we'd be able to tack, and then eventually the wind would creep behind us. As we head further south, we can feel the cold. Here I'm preparing banana pancake batter with our remaining bananas. Ah, look how calm the sea is here. A chance to stretch out my long suffering spine with the help of my trusty bit of cloth and two prussic loops. Now the conditions were dreamy. We go much faster in calmer seas. And by now the winds were right behind us. Time to pole out the Genoa. We're relieved to have two people on board for this job. It's kind of fiddly. But once set, it's very rewarding. Having light winds behind and still rolly seas meant that our furling lines had a good flogging. After many hours of punishment, some chafing had happened. Steve put an extra bit of rope with a rolling hitch forward of where the damage was in case a snap did happen. But by now New Zealand was out there and the conditions were beautiful. But Steve still doesn't like cameras in the morning. been a 
couple of days later, it wouldn't have looked like this. We were so calm that we could enjoy some time on deck and do some much needed stretching. It's not easy to train handstands on a monohull at sea, but I make do. In January, when we first arrived in New Zealand, we had gale force winds against us. This time, I was actually enjoying being at sea. Having said that, seeing familiar land was great, and the idea of sleep, even better. We hoisted our yellow flag to show that we were arriving from another country. Once in the calm of the Bay of Islands, it was pancake time. Remember those bananas from earlier? I was so ready for our welcome to new country pancakes. A tradition we've upheld five times this year already. And soon familiar landmarks rolled into sight. Kia ora, Aotearoa. We'd radioed in. The quarantine dock was busy, we were told. Oh dear, docking in fast currents amongst expensive boats is not my favourite thing. But still, it's much less stressful to check into a country you've checked into before. What was even better was that we were ahead of Cyclone Lola. Here's Steve's putting the fenders on to prepare for docking. And here's that boat we saw days ago at sea, overtaking us. It was nice to be back in the Bay of Islands with its many ferries and its many options for shelter. And our docking was inelegant but not disastrous. And when we were inelegant, we learnt. And within a few hours, we were checked in and we were introduced to a celebrity dog. We were told that this dog has appeared on several TV shows and is quite famous. Here the dog is demonstrating a trick, although I'm not quite sure what the trick was. Regardless, we were very impressed. Finally, we could leave the quarantine dock, anchor and sleep. The next morning we shifted to a more cyclone ready position and took this calm before the storm as an opportunity to send Steve up the mast. I got my workout winching Steve up the mast twice. There's a joke here somewhere about how many sailors does it take to change a light bulb. This is definitely a pre-cyclone job. Another ex-tropical cyclone in Aotearoa. And spoiler alert, again we live to tell the tale. <laughs>